This video is sponsored by Blinkist. What I, I thought I'd explain is um, public key cryptography. And this is the kind of cryptography that's used ubiquitously in, um, in modern communications. And it relies on remarkably simple um, mathematics, it relies on properties of prime numbers and on modular arithmetic. So prime numbers, as everyone will know, are numbers divisible only by themselves and one. Um, and we know there are infinitely many of those. Um, but there's a huge amount we don't know about the primes. Um, and a lot of mathematics that involves primes is still extremely difficult to us. So we can find prime numbers. We've got good um, um, methods for doing that with computers. But we don't have a good method for breaking um, numbers up in terms of their prime factors. So that um, asymmetry is critical to uh, public key cryptography. So it's a bit like making a cake. It's easy to find the constituent parts, but once you've mixed them together, it's very hard to separate them back out again. That's one uh, component of public key cryptography. The other is modular arithmetic, the idea that you can take a number uh, and subtract from it multiples of some other number um, and do arithmetic a bit like you would with a, with a clock where the, um, uh, you do arithmetic modulo 12. We tend to only record um, the time in terms of up to 12. So um, uh, 1500 hours is the same as three o'clock because you can subtract off 12 and, and you get to three. Um, so for example, um, 10 is, is, we would say, congruent to three modulo seven because if you subtract off seven from 10, you get three. Um, and, um, and 17 is congruent to 3 mod 7 because you can subtract off twice 7 and you get to 3. Um, so those, those are the two key components. So what is involved, I'll first of all describe in general, and then I'll give a couple of examples. So we start with two prime numbers, we'll call them P and Q, and the examples I'll give later will have small prime numbers just to make them manageable, but in practice, you use quite large prime numbers, maybe with 100 digits, let's say. And you multiply these together to form uh, a number n. So n is p times q. And n is called the public, uh, the, uh, the public key. So this is something, this is a number which um, we will advertise. Uh, anyone can see n but it's very hard for people to separate n back in terms of the product of p and q to find p and q from n. That's extremely difficult. So uh, it's easy if you know p and q to find n, you just multiply them together. But if you know n and don't know p and q, it's exceedingly difficult to find p and q. It would be a computational task if p and q are large enough that would take longer than the age of the universe given modern computers. So um, we're going to form uh, p minus one and, Q, and multiply it by Q minus one, and then we want to choose a number that's co-prime um, to this number that uh, has no, common, no factors in common with it. So we'll choose a number E that's co-prime uh, to, to, to that number. And I'll give some examples later. And then let's say we want to encode something. We want to send a, a, a number that's co that in some coded way that's very hard for other people to, to uh, decode. And we'll call that number M. Um, so this, this will be a number that we want to transmit to somebody else and we don't want a third party to be able to, um, to find M given the way we encode it. So what you do is quite simple. You form M, you get M, the message you want to send. You raise it to the power E, some number. Um, so you multiply it by itself E times, and then you do your arithmetic uh, modulo N. And we'll call this number C. And this is the encoded message. This is the encoded number. So you've taken the number you want to encode you multiply it by self e times, um, and you do this. Um, uh, you do this modulo n. So you subtract off 
um, multiples of n until you get a number c that lies between 0 and n minus 1. Um, now to do this, all you need to know are the number m that you want to send, the number e, and the number n. So the way that public key cryptography works is that if, you, if someone wants to send me an encrypted message, um, I tell them n and e. And they want to send me their number m. So they know m. They know that my, two, uh, my public key uh, is n and e. Those are things that, that I would advertise. And so they can form c from their message and my public key, which is n and e. So how, when I've received c, do I then reconstruct the number m? So this is what's sent. How do I, from the number c, get the number m out? Well, I do the following. First of all, I find a number d, the computation I can do, such that d times e uh, is equal to 1 modulo the number p minus 1 times q minus 1. Um, so I know my e, and I have to find a number d, and one always exists, such that when I multiply e by d, I get 1 if I subtract off multiples of p minus 1 and q minus, uh, times q minus 1. And then what I do is I get, is I get c, and I raise it um, to the power d, um, and do my arithmetic modulo n. So I, I have, somebody sent me the number c, that's the encoded number they were, the way they've encoded the number the m that they want me to know about. Um, I raise my c to the power d, which I know because I've solved this equation beforehand, and I compute c to the power d modulo m, and by a miracle the answer is always m. It's a party trick. Um, so it's a, it's a miracle of the way that prime numbers work, that if I do this, I get my number m, I get the number m back that they've sent me. And for them to send me c, only required a knowledge of n and uh, e, um, which I've advertised, so they can easily do that. For me to decode this, I need to know p and q. And that's very hard for other people to know. So uh, it's my knowledge, it's very hard for other people to, to, to discover P and Q from N. So I have a way of securely decrypting the message, given the information I have, but it's very hard for other people to do that. We've just heard about RSA cryptography from John, but this is of course not the first method humans have used to encrypt secret messages. The Codebook by Simon Singh provides an entertaining look at the long and intriguing history of secret communication, from ancient Greece to the modern day NSA. And this is just one example from over 5,500 titles available on Blinkist, the app which helps you to understand the most important ideas from non-fiction books and podcasts in only 15 minutes. Here you can see the eight blinks present in the Codebook, each one comprising of a digestible segment which you can either read or listen to. RSA cryptography appears in blink number seven, which adds some historical context to the algorithm that John's just been talking about. And there's more. With the new Blinkist Connect feature, you can share your premium account with another user, giving full access to two different accounts for the price of one. So, not only can you learn some amazing new maths, you can share it with your friends too. Start your seven day free trial and enjoy 25% off Blinkist Premium by clicking on the link below. I'm going to start with a, an ultra simple example uh, and then do some that require a little more arithmetic, but it's fun arithmetic. So the example I'm going to start with is where P is five and uh, Q is 11. Now this is a baby example. In practice, 
uh, you would use numbers, primes, with uh, maybe 100 digits, but um, uh, I'm doing this just for illustrative purposes. So I know P and Q. They're things I, I, I've decided in advance. From them, I form N, which is P times Q, uh, which is obviously 55. And that's a number I advertise. Anybody who wants to send me a message, um, I tell them, use 55 for N. Um, I also um, want to form a number E. I want to choose a number E. And for that, I need to compute P minus 1 times Q minus 1. And that's obviously um, 4 times um, 10, which is 40. So I need to choose a number E, which is co-prime to 40, which has no prime factors in common with 40. So I'm going to choose E to be 3. And I'm going to advertise that as well. So what I advertise to the world outside is N, which is 55, and E, which is 3. And I say, if you want to send me a message, use those two numbers. Let's say somebody wants to send me um, the message, which is a very simple message, um, the message uh, 7. So M is 7. They want to send me the number 7 for some purpose. I, I can't conceive what. Um, and, but they don't want anyone else to know that they've sent me the number 7. What do they do? So I get sent um, the number um, 7 to the power 3 modulo uh, 55, uh, which, uh, which is um, uh, 13. So um, that's the number I get sent. This is C. That's the encrypted number. And somebody who, inter who, who, who uh, if, if they were intercept this, they'd see 13 and they'd, they'd want to try to understand how to go from 13 to 7. But that's difficult unless you know P and Q, as I'm going to demonstrate. So how do I uh, go from 13 back to 7? Well, first of all, I need my D. I need to solve um, D times E. So D times 3. 3D is 1. Um, modulo uh, 40. So I need to find a number, D, which if I multiply it by 3, is a multiple of 40 um, uh, plus 1. And the answer is quite simple. Here's a solution. Uh, D is 27. Uh, so if I get 27, um, and um, multiply it by 3, I get 81, and that's twice 40 plus 1. So D is 27, um, is, the, is a number that I can use. And then to decode, I'm sent C, which is 13, and I'm meant to get 13, and raise it to the power 27, gulp, and do that um, uh, modulo 55. And if you do that, and it's an exercise, um, exercise that you might want to uh, try at home, and you might want to try to think of clever methods to do this. You can do this on a piece of paper. I did last night. Um, but uh, so I, I invite you to think about clever ways to do that. It's not as hard as it looks. Uh, the answer you'll find is that that gives you back seven. Um, so this is how somebody can send me the number seven encrypted into 13 in a way that I can decrypt if I know P and Q, because I needed to construct my D here, um, which, was, which involved P minus 1 and Q minus 1, um, but which, unless you know P and Q, is very hard to do. So I thought I'd do a second example, and then I'll tell you what the mathematics is that sort of underpins this. So here's the second example. It's where P is 23 and Q is 41. So those are my two prime numbers that uh, I, I, 
I'm going to use. The number I advertise to the world is P times Q, which is 23 times 41, um, which is 943. So I tell, tell the world, use 943 if you want to send me a message. The other thing I tell the world is a number E, which I want to be co-primed to P minus 1 times Q minus 1. And P minus 1 times Q minus 1 is 880. And so I'm going to choose a number which is co-primed to that. I'm going to choose E is 7 in this case. So now suppose my message that I want to send is my house number. So the message is and the number of my house, 35. So they're sending me 35. What do they send me? They send me the number C, um, which is uh, 35 uh, to the power 7 modulo 943, um, which, uh, according to my calculations, is 545. So that's what they send me. And um, <clears throat> they can send me that publicly. They can tell me, aha, I'm used your, um, I used your N, um, 943. I used your E, 7. Um, and the secret message I want to send you um, is encrypted to be 545. And they can take out a full page advertisement in their favorite newspaper, put all that information in. Uh, and the whole point is that, um, that uh, in principle, if these P and Q were large enough, only I can deconstruct the message, uh, can decrypt it. So to decode the message, uh, we need to find a D. Um, uh, such that D times um, E, which is 7, is congruent to 1 modulo P minus Q. 1 times Q minus 1, which is 880. So we need to find D such that 7 times D is 1 modulo 880. And um, uh, one solution to that is um, D is uh, 503. Again, that's a challenge uh, that you may wish to. You can, you can check this very easily, but the question is how you would find that D. I'll leave, I'll leave that as an exercise. So now what we do is compute um, uh, uh, the message I'm sent, 545. And we, we're going to raise that uh, to the power D, which is 503. And we're going to do this modulo 943. And the claim is that if you do this sum, and there are tricks to do it, uh, I won't do it for you, that you can put this on a big enough computer. Uh, um, uh, the answer turns out to be 35. So I would get back my message. And this is how public key cryptography works. Um, I advertise something very publicly. I advertise N and E. Uh, anyone can send me a message, a, a, a number, or a, a text message that's converted into a number, um, perhaps by assigning numbers to the letters in the message. Uh, they can send me that. Uh, I get the number. They send me the number C, which again, anyone can interpret, but it's only me who can de decrypt this to get back to 35, because to do that, you need to know P and Q, and only I know those. Now, why does all this work? Well, um, it's related to a very beautiful piece of, of 17th century mathematics due to uh, Fermat, uh, called Fermat's Little Theorem. Um, and a slight generalization of that uh, to the Euler function, Euler's tertiary function, um, you'll find that all of this can be done in a very elementary way, but I won't do that today.